Hey guys, Keith Keller, Melbourne, Australia. And we've got a brand new show, another great lineup, and it's a really, really special show because it's the LA Special Edition. This particular show is all about are real life events a thing anymore and are digital events even better? We're actually exploring all the different tech associated with digital events. We've been trying Airmeet this week and we've had some experiments there and we're really quite impressed. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. But because th this particular show, and I want to I play this out, I met the guests or some of the guests in person in LA. It was a 14-hour flight for me on the way back from Mexico and it was a 90-minute drive for one of our guests in heavy traffic. And we're going to ask the question today, are real-life events still worth doing? Of course they are. But are digital events a very close second? And in some respects, are they better? So we've got Doyle calling in from Perth. We've got Irene calling in from Connecticut. But we've got my friend Natasha Young calling in from LA and my very good friend Gail Murphy calling in as well. And we're going to really pull this apart. Is this idea of meeting in person in a cafe a good thing? Of course it is, but is there an alternative? So I want to throw first of all to Gail, but before I do that, I want to talk about some hashtags we're now using for this show. Uh, I'm very, very proud of this. We've got uh, a very cool hashtag, BTRL events, and that stands for better than real life. Not IRL, in real life, it's BTRL. We're going to start a trend, better than real life. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're also going to talk about an event coming up in Jamaica, a global event online, but it's actually mainly a, a digital version of an event I did two years ago called the Global Digital Marketing Summit. Very, very excited. Lots to cover. So first things first, I'll just introduce the team. Uh, we've got Doyle calling in from Perth. G'day, mate. We've got Irene calling in from Connecticut. We've got Gail calling in from West Hollywood. And, yes. we get it, and we've got Natasha Young calling in from an outerlying suburb of in Los Angeles, which is 90 minutes away from the action, and that's really the key phrase we want to talk about today. So while I've got you, Natasha, let's start with you. Um, tell me about this event we had together, and what, well, it was great. We met in person, but uh, what, was the traffic heavy, and, and have you subsequently gone into the city since, and, you know, what, what's the challenges there? Well, uh, besides the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic everywhere globally, um, that's sort of the main challenge that's keeping me out of driving into the city at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, this this event that we um, that you put together on short notice, um, yeah, it was it was something that I didn't I wouldn't have done otherwise. If you hadn't called us up and said, "Hey, I'm in LA," uh, I most likely wouldn't have made the trek into LA because it is a trek. The freeway here mm -hmm. is impossible. And it's, uh, I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just impossible. So I avoid the freeways as much as possible as a result. So yeah, that, that drive um, is usually, uh, you know, it's more than an hour each way. So it's, it's, yeah, nobody likes to do it, and um, I haven't been back to LA. Um, I, I can't recall the last time I've been in yeah. it. <laughs> and look, it's a ver it's a very good case in point. You know, it was a not a fourteen hour flight for me because I was on holidays. I went to Mexico and Belize and Guatemala, and I went to some Inca, I mean, Aztec sites and some Mayan sites, and it was all very funky. And I was on holidays anyway, so I was just travelling through. But I would imagine in the real world. I mean, we've got to we've got to get moving and and make maximize our time, haven't we? We've got to get we've got to get stuff um, done and spending an hour in a car each way. Even in Melbourne, Perth, and Connecticut, I'm sure this is uh this is sort of a bugbear. So you're saying you haven't been back to LA since our, our little uh, adventure? 
four years no. ago? Or no, I, I mean I can't recall the last time I was there. Um, yeah, I had been I had been limiting my travel into into and out of LA. Um, for people who don't know me, I'm an actress by training and profession, and uh, for the last few years I was getting my MBA. So, and that was out in uh, at Claremont Graduate University. So while I was there, I didn't, um, there was one year where I needed to travel into and out of LA for school, for, for classes that were being held downtown. Um, but for the rest of the time, I didn't really need to go into LA and I kind of had put myself on a sort of mini hiatus from acting, from, yeah. my, from my work. Yeah. So I didn't need to go in there. And um, actually the last acting role that I got booked in was uh, one of my classmates invited me to be part of a project. So I didn't need to go into LA to audition for that. They knew me, I booked the role and um, you know, and then everything in the industry has been shifting away from people needing to be in LA to audition over that wow. time that I've been in school. So you've yes. been auditioning on Zoom. Not yet. Mm -hmm. I'm getting that's what I'm getting back into, and and part of the reason that I'm now on Hacks, uh, talking about that with a, uh, one of my colleagues, um, yeah. we're you know, talking about that trend. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll hang on to that thought. I'll come. I'll come back to that thought about Haps. Haps. Dot TV is a very very cool site that uh, I recently discovered from a friend of mine, Chocolate Johnny. I've sent I've sim subsequently sent that email uh, to uh, Doyle and Irene, and we've been trying it, and you also have been trying it, Natasha. I want to I want to get your thoughts on this because Periscope is going away at the end of March, and we need to find some alternatives. But I want to I want to keep uh, this idea moving with the idea of LA and traffic. Gail, tell us tell us about the idea or the transition you feel now about, you know, the idea that a lot of stuff is online. You don't particularly really want to be going into the city and into crowded malls and, you know, bumping into people and getting the virus. So is uh, online stuff a, a, an alternative here and, and how does it compare to what we did ourselves? Well, I think what we did ourselves was the best. I don't care. I'm a people person. I like to be out there. I'm extremely social. So nothing compares to real life to me. So, yeah. But then we have secondaries. You know, it's like dating. There's guys that you date and guys that you marry. So <laughs> it, it's you, you get to exactly where you want to go. Um, there are certain things that you can do in real life that you should do online because everything you do online is documented. That's right. Well, and I'll tell well, you something. We're currently well, recording right now. Yeah, I we got had, had social media when I was growing up, I would have wound up in a school for bad girls. Seriously. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I suspect the same. Well, I, I want to just jump in there and, and say hello to the people that are watching on Facebook periscope and uh youtube this is exactly what you're saying that the world of social media means now that we can watch these shows on several different sites and i want to actually ask you what site you're watching them on which is important for us to know we can't do everything are you watching it on twitter via periscope are you watching it on youtube are you watching it on linkedin uh, sorry uh facebook I haven't got yet linkedin yet and if you can comment there because this actually makes the show much more dynamic but back to you about real life there's some things you just can't do online isn't there no oh, oh uh, me. You're, you're on it's it's you the light is shining on you certain things that you well uh, certain things that you can't do online um well first of all you're being documented so you really need to think about what you're saying mm -hmm. and uh, if you want to take responsibility for everything that you say. Well, especially, I would, I would suspect, in a job interview or um, yeah. not necessarily working with a client. Then it's extremely valuable. But um, you, you have to take responsibility for who you are and what you're saying and what you're putting out there. Um, I think I'm more familiar with what some of the don'ts are, but um, mm -hmm. can you can you think of anything for yourself that's a positive with all of the of this online world? Can you see of a po positive? I mean, do you want to jump on a plane and come and see me and spend uh, fourteen hours on a plane getting here? <laughs> 
I don't know. I just I sometimes think I'm spoiled, you know, <laughs> that I try and only do stuff that I really like. Ah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost that it doesn't really matter if it's in person or it's online or if I have to, you know, time travel. <clears throat> I'm good with that. But yeah. um, have you have you got a machine? I'm coming over now. I'm coming over now. <laughs> if you've got a machine to time travel, I want to go into the future, maybe well, the 2075. I don't want my answer documented, so I'm not. <laughs> I want to have to. Come I want to in. go and meet Picard. I want to go and meet Worf. I want to go I and meet Worf. To, but I'll tell you something. It's a it's a really good second choice. Okay, really good second it really choice. Is. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's so terrific. I mean, we were talking about this a little earlier when we were adjusting my the frame and the audio. <clears throat> One of the really cool things about what you get to do in life that ex especially expresses itself to this topic is you get to, see, the good news is you get to see how the world sees you. Yeah. The bad yeah. news is you have to figure out and decide how is it you want the world to see you. That's right. You've got a choice, but you've got to do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, it's like with free music, you know, you think it's, you know, it's like, but never mind for that. I don't want to be documented <laughs> on that one, but, um, it's good. It's it's a it's a really significant second, and I'm really happy about it. I didn't grow up with it. I didn't. I've never worked with it until. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, I've worked with it, but I've never worked with it to the point where um, it actually came into my job and career part of my life. So, I mean, I work with the BBC, and I was you know live in 144 countries. Sitting on my couch over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's sort of where that's where, I'm, and I want to pick up on this because we've got an event coming up in May, May twelfth, May twelfth to the fourteenth. Now in Jamaica, it's set. The uh, the hashtag is GDMS, the Global Digital Marketing Summit, and we now have an event planned. And the whole plan is that there's going to be a whole heap of people from around the world who can't go to Jamaica, especially in Australia. We are disallowed from going to any, anywhere overseas until at least January 22. Uh, and, and just today, South Australia closed, South Australia closed its borders to us because we've got two cases in the whole state and they're a bit scared, so they've closed the borders. So, you know, if you're stuck in South Australia, good luck. There's quite a few places and a lot of wineries there, but, um, you know, you might get stuck there. So, as you said, it's a nice second. So I want to bring Irene and Doyle into this conversation about the idea that given that we can't travel, given that we can't, even if we wanted to go to LA and spend 14 hours on a plane or an hour in traffic, what, what are the options? Doyle, t tell me about what we're doing with the Digital Marketing Summit and all of the choices that are now available, especially with the lens of Air Meet, which we were talking about this week, which is a lovely site we've been experimenting with. Yeah, well, it's just a matter of, um, I guess, being able to understand. I love what Gail was saying about time travel. And, and technically, we have become time travelers because in, in my mind, with these online digital events, time is somewhat irrelevant. Um, space is irrelevant, right? And distance is irrelevant as well because we can kind of join in at any time. And I think that that's one of the, the cool things about this is that it, it gives us that flexibility that we've never had before, right? You don't have to plan, you know, weeks in advance to come, yeah. well, months to come to an event, right? You can actually just show up, right? And so I think we've gained some some fantastic flexibility. You don't need to... Um, you know, go somewhere for a specific meeting. You can have an introductory meeting, and yeah, if you decide to have a you know a, a person to person face to face meeting, then that's certainly an option. So I, I think it allows us to be more selective of our time and be more precise in terms of what it is that we're doing uh, yeah. with our time and, and how we're doing it. So something like GDM uh, GDMS it allows us to be able to to do that. Like we're going to be able to join in on uh, a conference, a hybrid conference that's over in Jamaica, right? So you don't have to spend the 27 hours one way to get there. You can actually connect when you're ready after you, you know, you've after you've got your coffee, uh, after you, you know, got your comfortable seat and away you go. 
So to me, the, well, let's, the yeah, let's bring Irene in on this because I really want to pick up on this because we, uh, the, the Global Digital Marketing Summit, which really was a line in the sand for me in May 2019, what happened there in January 2019, Erica McKenzie, who lives in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, said, I want you to fly to Jamaica 27 hours. I want you to pay for your ticket $2,700. And then when the uh, then when the event makes lots of money, which it will, we'll pay you back. Okay, okay. There's a couple of things going on there. First of all, I've got to fly to Jamaica, 27 hours, Melbourne, LA, LA, Miami, Miami, Kingston, Jamaica. It'll take me a day in real time to get there, and it'll take me about three days to get over it. I suddenly talk and I have a great time, and I swim, and I maybe I learn to surf, I drink a few you know bottles of rum, and you know, learn to do all this cool stuff. And then I come back, takes me about a week to get over it, and it's cost me $2,700. And if the event makes money, I'll get paid. So I did it via Zoom, and uh, I charged them $500. Everyone got, everyone got a win. I didn't have to travel. I got to speak uh, three times. I recorded it. They got the information. There was 150 people in a room. And there was 50 people around the world on a chat room. We used Adobe Connect. And so when uh, when uh, Erica said this year, let's do this again, I said, I'm up for it. And I've, I've actually got Doyle and Irene really, really interested. So, Irene, where do you think this idea will go as a, as a trend in the future for events? The idea will go far, Keith. The idea will go very far, and we have every confirmation we ever need right now, okay? We look at social media trends. We're looking at digital marketing trends and amount of platforms, amount of bloggers that talk about it. I mean, this is overwhelming. Every day I get, like, another notification, you know, look this, learn this, how to do virtual events this way gain your leads, gain your presence that way, all right? So it's yeah. definitely booming. It will continue growing. I mean, I don't think you, me, or Doyle or anybody else need to be convinced, okay? The question is how we become, how we become part of it. Yeah. Okay. Look, the thing I really want to pick up on, and I love how this conversation is really developing fast, I really want to pick up on the idea of ROI. ROI for people is different. It could be enjoyment, but it also could be value for money based on the spend. Can you just briefly tell me what your thoughts are on ROI of virtual events? They've got to be off the charts. Absolutely. No, someone who comes from physical events, okay, I used to be organizer, I used to be host and sponsor, and a lot of dollars from the company I used to work for went into, and a lot, I mean like hundreds and hundreds of thousands, okay, for big events. For smaller events, that would be tens of thousands, okay? Still, still very significant budget. So when I'm speaking with someone who was or is in these shoes right now, they all confirming that ROI for company who is hosting or for group that's hosting is ch changing immensely because frankly, right, what we're experiencing right now, we can still see people, we can talk to people, we can find like-minded mm. people all over the globe and it costs a fraction. It costs a fraction right now. Of course, this whole industry being disrupted, right? The whole event industry. So those who feel the pain are the speakers, the talent. Yeah. Yeah. They feel yeah. the pain. It used to be, Keith, right? They used to go yeah. places. They loved that. They used to be paid a lot, you know, for each speaking engagement. Right now it's changing. But I'm looking with optimism into the future. That means this industry needs to find this new equilibrium, okay? Yeah. In terms of engagement, that will work. But for company, for the sponsors right now, this is day and night. What used to be, you still can make deals. You still can meet clients. You can still show what yeah. your products are about. If anything, it's more virtual. What is it? Uh, it's, uh, it's more productive right now because we yeah. still research our products, right, before we buy them anyways. But, well, I think, yeah. the, I think the point with the idea that BTRL, better than real life, it really is the question is for who? You know, yep. maybe the person walking through the door going to an event would prefer to go to an event and sit in the cafe and have coffee and buy a pizza and just chill. Maybe the person going to an event is worse off. But we know for sure that the businesses are off the charts saying, mate, I'm saving so much money here. 
I'm saving so much time here. I'm actually getting a result for a fraction of the cost. So in that regard, and I really want to play that video again, the, the, mm -hmm. the ROI is, in my opinion, far, far better, which is why I've made a special graphic about that. But that being said, because we're on a bit of a, we've gone a bit of a soapbox, I want to talk to Gail about an event we did together. We did this event together in December and I didn't leave my house and we spoke at uh, I think two o'clock in the afternoon my time at a conference and this is a really interesting model. What we did, the conference would have been in the real world Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, go home, you know, Monday and then, you know, go back to work. And that's the model of the world, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which is possibly the model they're using in Jamaica. What they did here was they did two hours every night for 10 nights. So that means you could go to work, you didn't have to travel, and at night you could come to any of the sessions that were about this idea of, you know, publishing your own book and is there a concept called e-books and are we doing this thing called Kindle and is this all working? Gail, tell me about what you thought that to a conference achieved and what, what was missing and what lessons did we learn there? Well, it was much more consumer-centric. It made it super easy. You didn't have to pay for parking. You didn't have to drive there. You didn't have to figure out where to have a place to go eat. You know, what if you don't like it? What, you know, if you like a session that's at 9 in the morning and then you, there's not another one you want to attend till like 2.30 in the afternoon and what do you do with your time? And, and so I think that was very clever. I think it was very smart. I mean, Tony is a very uh, forward thinking guy. So that to, to think to do that, it's completely different when it's at live events. When it's at live events, you can always find something to do. But if, it's, if you're going online with it, you, ha you have to set it up that way so that it's two hard hours and that's it and you can see it whenever you want. Yeah. There's a lot of net, the, the only thing you, that is the only slice of the pie that is not there is networking. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to come back to that because there's two sites I want to talk to you about with this. But uh, because Natasha hasn't chatted for a while, I want to bring her in and, and move everyone around. I hold this thought about the idea of two hours a night and the networking. And I really want to pick up on Natasha's take on HAPS TV. Now, you have to go and try this, HAPS.TV. It's a cool site. The guys are in LA. And I'm using StreamYard right now. But I really, really want to give uh, HAPS a big, uh, um, big round of applause. What do you think of HAPS, uh, Natasha? And what, how does it compare with what you're seeing playing out here? I just made a little comment on your Periscope while we're <laughs> so there's Haps TV. Yeah, um, I was excited to to hear about this from from yourself, Keith. Um, you, you were trying to tell me about this at the end of last year. I remember you were saying, "Oh, there's there's something going on with this." Um, you know, company called Haps, and you should check it out. And I literally just looked at their website last week, and they were starting this Haps challenge, hashtag Haps challenge. Yeah. And I thought, why not jump in there and just see how it works? So within a few days, I was up and running. And what I really liked about Haps was that I didn't have to, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had to do too much to understand how to just you know, jump on there and start broadcasting. And it looked really professional for someone who isn't really live streaming all the time. Yep. So that's what I really liked about it. The other part that I really liked is that it allows the content creators to immediately connect with their audience and it allows their audience to award them so that they can actually fund and continue to create more. Yeah, they're, they're gamifying it, aren't they? They're so just, just to clarify what Natasha just said, you can, haps.tv, you have to check this site out. It's really, really cool, especially if you're a Periscoper because Periscope is going away. So what Haps does is it allows you to broadcast inside a community. Currently about 10,000 people have just started. I think it's about 10,000, and you can broadcast inside the community and that community can give you a coin. Hey, hands up, thumbs up. That might be 50 cents. 
Or mm. I really, really like this show. That might be one dollar. And you can buy these coins from them and you can get coins by doing shows. So what they've done is they've gamified the experience. The more you live stream, the more coins you get. You can buy coins and give them to others in the form of a present. Hey, high five, welcome, happy new year, cheers from Melbourne, love your show, here's $5. And it's, uh, it's a way that you're saying, it's a way of creators being paid uh, rather than live streaming for essentially free and somehow trying to monetize down the track, there, it's inbuilt monetization in the side. It's really clever, isn't it? I love it. I, I've, I really, I love that aspect of it. I haven't seen it and on any other platform. And I'm, I'm pretty new to live streaming, so you can tell me whether there is any other platform that does this. But I don't know of any. Yeah. So. Well, the, the most important thing about Haps, and most importantly, a, a site called Clubhouse, which we'll talk about in a minute as time allows, is that they're very similar to sites that have come and gone before. Come and gone. This is the most important part. They no longer exist. Meerkat, Blab, you know, these sites came and we're all very excited for that day. Mm -hmm. You know, and then everyone was saying, oh, this is going to be the bomb. This is bloody brilliant. Let's get on this. Meerkat. Grab your phone, check out an app, you know, just sort of make a video of you having an ice cream. And then Periscope came along and said, hang on, you know, oh, we've got this. And they took over and now, and who even remembers Meerkat, right? It, it was a thing. Many people in this call might not have even have heard of it. So with Clubhouse and Haps, which are sort of coexisting, we are very worried that if they don't monetize, if they don't find a way to keep going, they'll simply disappear. And for us, that's a tragedy because we invest a lot of personal time in building up our side and building up our following, and then suddenly it goes away. But with that in mind, I want to talk about two things. One is I want to, I want to hear Doyle and Irene and even uh, Natasha and Gail's thoughts on Clubhouse. But I, I want to come back to Gail's thoughts about networking, and I, I want to specifically ask Doyle this. We've been researching a site called Airmeet, airmeet.com. It is brilliant. You know, there's a couple of things I really love about it. There's a couple of things I really love about it. One is it's free to try it, what we call freemium. So you can run an event and just get your feet wet and try it out, see if it works on your system, if, you interview, if your internet's fast enough. I'm getting 50 megabytes a second. Doyle's getting about 1,000, you know, I'm guessing. But, you know, it's really fast over there in Perth. 150 but right now. 150 <laughs> right now. So well, she's 450. Getting, 450. Four, any advance on 450? Have we got an advance on 450? Once, twice, sold at 450 megabytes a second. So, you know, Doyle is getting, you know, nine times the internet speed of me, so he can do lots of funky things. But you might find this site and think, you know, it does really great stuff, but I can't use it in my house because my internet's too slow, and I'll talk to Natasha about this in a minute. But T tell me about Airmeet and why you're loving it because it's got some really funky ideas and it picks up on what Gail's talking about with the networking, doesn't it? Yeah, I think fundamentally you need to look at how do you build a community when you're having these events and and you can have sort of like a Zoom. I mean, obviously we've been sort of stuck in that Zoom uh, time warp or whatever uh, for a long time. Uh, and you can sort of have some level of closer connection. And I think that's ultimately what it's about. So uh, something like Airmeet allows that to have like a, a close connection where you can actually connect with one person individually. You can choose who you want to connect with. You, you're not kind of thrown into a room, although there is that option um, for just kind of to be networking. So I think fundamentally it's, it's, it's a question of how do we connect people so that they can have a conversation. So yeah, these these experiences and these events are great. You go there to learn something, but as is you know in a traditional event, you also go there to meet the people. And so something like Airmeet, and there are a few others out there as well. They give you that uh, ability to connect with somebody individual. I, I, I it's been said many times that you know most of the conversations, most of the people that you meet are not when you're sitting listening to a speaker, right? They're when you're you know, at the lunch break in the in the conference mm. hall in the the um, the trade show area or the entry entryway or whatever, that's where you connect with people. And so it's it's very, very important to to if you want to create that emotional connection, that that connection of, of being there, that you talk with other people. And that's one of the cool tools that I think is absolutely fundamental 
um, for every single event going forward is you have to have some form of how do we connect people? How do we actually have a, a conversation um, with each other from around the world or, you know, across the room kind of thing as well? Would you agree with that? Dale, you've got some thoughts on that? I got a question for Doyle. Yeah. So how does that allow you to be stealth? In other words, when I when I go to events, typically you have a choice of about 20 different events that are going on about the same subject. So which one do you choose? So you have to be stealth. Where am I going to meet the most amount of people in the shortest amount of time? When am I going to meet? How? Uh, which one is going to allow me to uh, interact with influencers in my uh, space? Um, how much time there is to be able to do that? I mean, uh, do you? I, I don't really want to spend my time networking where I don't know before I go in yeah. um, what the deal is. Pick up on yeah. the store. This is really important. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. And that's one of the, the issues is that you, you can get stuck in a room with someone who you wouldn't necessarily connect with. Um, so there are some tools and some capabilities. And if you have like a good host or a good MC or a good facilitator, they can quickly kind of recognize, oh, I'd love to, you know, get Gail to talk with Irene or whatever, just because they've, you know, chatted back and forth or whatever. So there's not necessarily that ability to be stealth about it to kind of open the peek and open i mean i've done that you open the door and it's like oh do i want to go into this room no and you close the door right so it's an interesting thought like you, you kind of have to be out there you're kind of in or out you're you can't be sort of halfway mm. you can't kind of dip your toes um and see because yeah. once you jump into that zoom room like people know that right and and they may not know you and they'll probably forget 20 seconds later that you know gail murphy came into this room and then Oops. she left <clears throat> yeah but that, that certainly is, you know, a potential area to, to develop as well. It's how do you actually create that just kind of like ghosting around the areas and see where you want to, where you want to set up shop. It's like I, interesting. I when you go to events that are a couple of days um, in succession and you meet people and you meet someone at 10 o'clock in the morning and then you start chatting with someone about two o'clock and it turns out that they came to the event with that person that you met earlier and both of them are are two so sides of the same coin in turn in terms of a, of a coin that i'm looking to actually interact with and um, you, you have an opportunity to say, you know what, it's so noisy in here, let's just step outside, maybe go for a drink or something. I just wanna pick your brain for about five minutes, um, that kind of thing. But you, you know, it has to be someone that you actually have a rapport with who understands um, what, your, uh, what your journey is and, and you don't have to sit there and explain it quite so much. Because it's yeah. like, hit them up, move them out. Come on. Let, let, me, pick up, let me pick up on this guy. Yeah, so you, need, you need that opportunity, if I may, just Keith, for a second. Yeah, just, you, you go. Yeah, it, it's just a matter of uh, perhaps that's where you need more of sort of like a, a fireside chat or, or something that allows you that opportunity. And, and you're right, like online conferences, they're rushed and you, you go with this speaker and that speaker and away you go kind of thing. So I think that becomes how you actually produce the event. And look, like yeah brutally honest you can't go grab a coffee if you meet someone unless they are in the same city as you which can happen um you know through through online events and that sort of thing but fundamentally it's it's how do you actually create that experience or that opportunity for people to meet like you said um perhaps they have you know a, a side room that two people can jump into and just kind of chat as well on their own so it's a great question and, and i think we're on a, a huge evolution curve here because we're seeing it and it obviously started as something like look zoom's been around for five plus years right video conferencing has been around skype's been around for a, yeah. longer than that so we're kind of grabbing these tools and using them we were kind of forced into it because of 2020 um, but i think a lot of people are realizing how do we actually do this better how do we do this differently and and we're seeing tools come up like every single well not every day but you know every week kind of thing that that kind of answers those those inherent questions that says, well, we really need to be doing this. So, so then you see it, it's, it's a feature. It's like, okay, they're, they're getting it, they're evolving. Yeah, it's like to, um, when, when we did that event for the digital authors, 
it was unfortunate that they cut our time down before we before we even got there and also um we didn't have any interactivity and when we were putting our program together we decided on you know 15 hard minutes out of an hour that we were going to do it and uh at the end tony said gee i wish i you told me that you wanted people to talk to you i was like what really i had to tell you that yeah. but one of the the benefits of having that q a is someone will, will ask a question and then you can take them to the next level like well yes. here's my email and i it's interesting you should mention that i just finished a report exactly on that and then you have a, a whole deal that you've got going on 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 your own but every single but at the end of the day on some level every single person that was on that zoom thing was qualified to actually do business with you or I. Yeah, I, I agree. And there's those, yeah, those soft things that are part of any sort of human conversation. And, and again, a lot of them don't necessarily have that because they don't recognize it. it's like, why would you want to talk to people? You're just here to learn, right? But no, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't really work like that. There was a platform that we were looking at the other day, uh, Run the World, um, which is which is very nice because it has that sort of fireside chat where you can get together in a room and just just chat with the speaker. Is that runtheworld.com? Oh, dog, can you just punch that into the uh, chat room? Yeah. Natasha's got a question. I might bring yeah. Natasha in. Just type that uh, type that into the chat in Facebook sure. or YouTube or runtheworld.com, I think it is. And we'll come back to why you like it. But yeah. Natasha, you've oh. got an idea about why how networking can work in a in a sort of an online setting. What's your thoughts? Well, yeah, it was just to add add on. I was listening to both Doyle and Gail on this and, and thought to a recent event that I just attended, which was the hop in kickoff event. Yeah. Yep. And um, what was really exciting about that was um, I, I haven't done much networking in person or online yet. I've just kind of like been in that in-between phase where I haven't done enough of both to like really speak on the live events as much. Um, but this online event, what I liked about the, the networking aspect and it what really like got me thinking was um, Gail's comment about, you know, being sort of stealth about, you know, who, how you, and it just made me think how I was able to, after the event was over, because the networking was just really rushed, I felt. Oh, okay. It was, it was, a, was a real, it was a weakness. It was, it was a weakness for, for that event for me. Um, and so what I ended up doing was after the event was almost over. And so what I had to do was just go through the comments and see what people were saying in the room. Like they had different rooms that you could go into and, and hear different topics. And you could go into that room and look through the comments. And as I looked through there, I could see, oh, this is a really interesting conversation. Who is this person talking? and I can look at their bio and wow, that person really interests me. Maybe I can reach out to them after the but, event. You say, but you're saying you had to do the work. You, they made you do all the work. I had to do that work. I had to do the, the thinking and do the work and go to LinkedIn. To you were very smart to think of it in that <laughs> way. Absolutely. I mean, that's like, um, that's something I would do, but uh, because I'm, you know, I'm sort of desperate, not in the, in the sense that if I spend some time somewhere and, and, and really put it out there, I want something back, even if I have to go and drag it out of its house. Let me let me pick up on. Let's keep this going. The, the 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 theme here is what would be your suggestions for making virtual events more like their real world counterparts? And we're talking about this here. I want to bring Irene in. Um, we're we're actually at the moment exploring airmeet.com, and this site really offers a lot of promise in this regard, doesn't it? It has the networking part. Do you think it's it's partially meeting what's being talked about today? Do you think we're getting close? Uh, yes, Keith, you know, actually, I am so actively exploring right now Air Meet. I'm meeting with Air Meet soon tonight. Okay, East Coast time because they're going to run demo for us. They're going to like show things that we don't necessarily can discover ourselves. But I was quite impressed with their demeanor towards potential clients. I haven't attended any events yet that run by Air Meet. 
but I'm looking at case studies. I'm looking at client testimonials. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's very impressive because what I love and clients talking for them, it's not the company talking, right, about their product as clients. Um, documenting their successes. So what draw my attention is basically their network lounge and how they arrange guests around the table. Yeah. So I think this is brilliant because, frankly, I'm likely to speak to someone who I'm next to in that room, even virtual room, right? Then someone like I'm in big, you know, auditorium with. So to me, this is a good thing. And a bunch of other small features, let's say speakers, speakers upload to their backstage experience. Yeah. But to know how that goes. If that doesn't work, then speakers really lost backstage and, you know, organizers really frantically trying to solve whatever. So all I'm saying is it, it sounds like this is a really great platform, yeah. but yet to experience it, yes. from. Well, let, let, me, let me just explore why what you just said is so important. Mm -hmm. We tried, and I really want to pick up on what you said, Nat Natasha. We have tried hop in for us. It was okay. awful. I'm, I'm, we're about halfway in, so this is not going to go into the public stream. But we have tried hop in, and it was awful for us. We have had experience as speakers being invited to a, an event where several of my very good friends were, you know, doing me a favour by coming to this event to try this new site called Hop In. And we had enormous, enormous trouble, so much so that we coined the phrase turning lemons into lemonade and we just went over to LinkedIn, uh, sorry, to a stream yard and we just, had, we just made, it, made it up. This was absolutely a win for us. Hopping was horrible. Stream yard saved the day. And I, I actually I, coined I the phrase. I yeah, I guess it's, it's like we've experienced that a few times. Like we've kind of been testing the platforms uh, and that sort of thing. And we've had that, like, there has been like some catastrophic failures. <laughs> um, like Remo was one of them, right? W which was sort of the precursor to the, the table networking idea where it just couldn't connect and it was so difficult. Um, but you know what? They're getting a little bit better. Restream, we tried, you know, some shows on that. And at the time, like, yeah, it was catastrophic. It didn't really work at all. Uh, but now you look at it and it's quite a lot better platform. So, yeah, I mean, look, hop in, it wasn't that experience. And I think all of us are looking for how do we actually relate that experience to, to what's happening and how yeah. we can and, and, you know, adjust it to our need. And it didn't quite have that. It's still it's still very limit, linear. And I think that's the problem with a lot of solutions like Zoom, for example. It's very linear. It's like, OK, let's just get people together and we'll have video. Oh, yeah, video. Great. Cool. OK, now we want to kind of connect in private rooms so we'll have breakout rooms oh cool great let's have breakout rooms so it's very linear but all you're really doing is you're translating the basic basic of technology to say yeah. well let's have video oh let's have breakout rooms so there's no sort of evolutionary step and i love what natasha was saying about having sort of that that extra phase afterwards to be able to kind of uh, reconnect with yourself and others just that that time that space to be able to do that right to me that that's fundamental and then gail is suggesting that wait we need really more um we might not necessarily want to be part of this conversation or we want to be able to choose our conversation so that we're not mm. wasting our time as well so to me those are <clears throat> pardon me those are the evolutionary steps that we can actually use to make these events better yeah. Well, let me pick up on this because uh, way back in November, we did a, an event, which I'm really proud of. We did an event with Robin. I, I actually can't say a name, so I just called her Robin Flame and Fabulous because I couldn't pronounce her name. And, uh, and uh, she's written a book about this, uh, facilitating virtual events. Now, the reason why this is really important, that particular video has had 6,000 views. The reason why this is very important is because right at that time, Robin was talking about a site where she... and you'll know what I'm talking about when I mention it. She says, I went to this event and you didn't have to use your camera. You didn't have to use your video. All you saw was a little face and people were talking. This is November. And we're thinking, geez, you know, an audio only networking site. Geez, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to take off. I, I, no, I don't know. No, I, I'm, not, no, <laughs> no. I'm, not, I'm not sure I see the value no, of that. But no, it'll work in talk radio. No, that's it. That's it. Operator. But now we have this th site called Clubhouse, and I really want to pick up on this because we're right at the cusp of a, an evolutionary shift 
We have Zoom fatigue. We're sick and tired of having to dress up for the camera, getting our Wi-Fi to work and getting a background and getting a nice webcam and getting lights. Now there's a site called Clubhouse and also Twitter Spaces. Twitter has now invented a variation on this. I want to run the room and see what everyone says. Uh, have you heard of this thing called Clubhouse, uh, Natasha? What is your take on it and have you experimented with it? I, I don't unfortunately have a take on Clubhouse. I can't get access to it because I have an Android phone. Android, well, uh, that's that's actually my particular beef as well. Twitter Spaces is a site that uh, Twitter will run and I predict it will win this game. But mm. uh, Clubhouse has 6 million users 6 million users. It only started in April last year, and it's an audio-only network. What's your take on it, uh, Irene? You've had some really interesting discussions around the idea that there's no discernment. You can't really pick your room, can you? Or you can't really work out who's in there. You're a bit, you've got some challenges. Yeah, so I have to thank my friend Doyle here, second week in a row, because I'm only in because Doyle was kind enough. So the rule of engagement that your friend should be kind to you, invite you in. So you have this ooh, very special kind of feel about you. Ooh, somebody likes me. So yeah. if we're not in elementary school anymore, you know, <laughs> this kind of factor is not the most critical in my life. But thank you, Doyle, so very much. So all I'm saying, it has this exclusivity feel, which I don't think very productive, but that's OK. So I'm in now, and I'm exploring, and I see people with 100 followers already and I'm already behind. So it's not a race, it's not a game, okay? Adults like to, you know, engage themselves. But all jokes apart, um, there is a big potential for businesses and I see some serious conversations happening there. So a couple of weeks ago, I was more skeptical because again, the uh, meetups or how do you call it, rooms, right? That were proposed to you, they were not very relevant despite the fact that I included my interest and some of them were really funny that they were suggested to me. So it's improving and really, I don't want to be too tough of a critic, okay? So I see some familiar faces and that's good. So I am influenced by people I know. I don't like enter, you know, the rooms where nothing relates to me, like nothing. Yeah. So I don't and really have much time. I'll, okay, I'll, say, and I'll come back to you, Gail, on this because I, I know this picks up on a few things we've talked about. But, Doyle, you've talked about Clubhouse before because you've tried it and you quite like it. Tell me, tell me what you think the use case is for an audio-only networking solution, even if it is Twitter Spaces. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it does sort of – it allows you to kind of let loose, right? Um, you don't have to be prim and proper. You can just listen in. Or you can just talk, right? Like, let's be honest, you know, you got to get ready for the show, got to put on the, the concealer, you know, you got to get the lights ready, you got to get your microphone plugged in. So all these steps, right, are detracting again from that conversation, from that time, right? We want to make time completely irrelevant so that you can just join in. It doesn't take much. You put in your earpiece or you listen from your phone and away you go. So you're able to connect with it like just just so easy and it's like selectable talk radio you're just listening there's there's a lot less mental energy required to listen as opposed yeah. to okay. you know create uh, and do you think clubhouse has something unique that Twitter spaces uh, well, can't replicate or do you think um, they'll they'll simply jump it yeah look it's it's hard to say i, I mean Honestly, part of their exclusivity um, is sort of an oversubscribed model. So the, they do it, number one, because it is just a beta release and they haven't really kind of worked out all the bugs yet. So there's that. It's just a matter of time. So who, which market do they go after first? Um, how do we get beta testers? Um, so it's, it's a really good example of that. But the fact is, is that it's connected with a lot of people. Uh, because they like it it's it's like again you you don't you just show up you don't have to worry about where you are is there stuff in the background you know um do i have to go on a little jog or a trek or whatever right it, it, it's 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 there's no preconditions to entering all you're doing is mm -hmm. talking and conversing so yeah you have to find the right conversations or yes you you have to create the right conversations get a moderator get somebody to help you as well um, you don't have to start in the big groups because, yeah, then it's like being on WhatsApp where it's like just this whole stream of stuff that you can't jump in and it's 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 really difficult. But, you know, my recommendation, take it day by day, 
give it a go if you can. Don't worry. I, there's a lot of sort of memes around it, but it's it has in some cases become like a a, a space for marketers marketing, right? So yeah. you know you have to be very specific in terms of what you're looking for and what you're trying to accomplish. But uh, to me, it, it's it's a game. One of those things that I I feel it will stick around. But you know what I've been wrong before in terms of the social channels that do. But that said, like Twitter is is jumping on it and Facebook is jumping on it. So they see that it is, you know, one of those things that that's really emotional driven. It's not necessarily tech driven. And I think that's yeah. what you're able to do there is have is have good conversations you know, with no pre preconceived notions or conditions or whatever. It's just, let, let's just talk, talk about it. And, and Gail, come in on this. Have you heard of Clubhouse? Have you, have you got a take on it? Uh, just before you answer that question, I remember once when we first met, you said there's so many ways to connect. There's email, there's Twitter, there's LinkedIn, there's, there's Facebook, there's Pinterest, and now there's Clubhouse. And so what's your take on it? Because it picks up on this idea of discernment. It's very hard to, to actually find a room with uh, interesting stuff in it. Well, what is their mission statement? In other words, why are they in business? What do they do? What is their service? Well, the basic idea of Clubhouse, and, and um, Doyle can pick, pick, pick up on this, is it's an audio-only networking solution. You don't have to have your video on. It's in a way, the way I describe it is blab without video. Okay, so yeah. you, you use the word networking, which is typically uh, associated with one's work life. So um, business versus social? Yes, that's a question. Is it business, uh, business, business centric? Or yeah, there are, yeah, there are, there are a lot of business topics, right? But there also are a lot of yeah more social topics too. It's like just how to, you know, uh, people unwinding at the end of the day, at the end of the week too, right? Just chatting and and you know um, talking about stuff. There's no real subject other than you know just having a chat too. So it's almost like self-selectable talk radio, quite honestly, yeah, where you can select it, you can, radio, you like can join in the conversation that you want to. Like there's there's quite a lot there. So you you choose the topic, you can search on it by keywords or it'll recommend you based on your interests and that sort of thing so it doesn't necessarily have to be pure networking and i think that's where the attraction is is that it, it is it can be much more social um and, and anchor tried that right so it's, it's basically it can be like a podcast but your audience is is right there too if you're looking at more from the yeah. business side of things. yeah um, I'm, I'm kind of okay so here's an example I'm always seeking out either actors or writers, authors. I wouldn't be interested, me personally, and I haven't done it, but I'm just trying to think, would I do that? I, I don't think I would want to be in a, uh, spend my time, I don't want to say be in, but spend my time for something that doesn't advance my life's work. Yeah, I, I agree. Look, we're coming up to the hour, and I just want to give everyone an opportunity to sort of wrap up. It's it's five minutes to the hour. I just want to give everyone a chance to to give their 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 socials. I know uh, Natasha's got a busy day ahead. It's getting late there. So, Natasha, tell us a little bit about what you're doing there, how we can contact you, and uh, and then I'll just wrap it up with the hour. It's, it's probably sensible that we just keep it to the hour. What, what are you doing then, and how can people get to you? I appreciate that, Keith. Thank you so much for having me on. And it was good to see and meet everybody. Um, the, the Where I'm at right now is HAPS TV. I'm really going for it in a major way right there. So right now I'll be on there live streaming actually tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. So people can join me. The link is in my bio on Twitter. My handle is right there, at Natasha Young. And you can find me on most every platform at Natasha Young. So I look forward to meeting more of you and seeing more of you over there. Okay. Well, you, you feel free to go and do your thing. I know you've got a busy night ahead, so we'll see you later. And thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you. night, everyone. And Gail, tell us about what you're doing there. Tell us how you, um, you're you going with your, you've got, you know, you've got the book, but and th a lot of what's going on here is very challenging, especially in the US. How can people contact you and what's your next steps? Well, um, I'm a media and presentational coach. I'm also a journalist and a broadcaster. Um, 
So I like to teach people who are especially entrepreneurs, I teach them how to tell it to sell it, how to present themselves and, and how to just move their message forward. So I mean, I have clients that I'm working with. I work with the studios. I work with uh, PR firms. And I work, that, see, that's the only time that it really benefits me to uh, really put myself out there with something, with, with another business that has nothing to do with my business. Yeah. Because what I can do is take all the components of their business and actually help them present it using the media or even even in in real time. So that's what I'm working on. That's what's happening. We have an impeachment trial going on right now. So I'm very much um, engaged in, in that. Um, yeah. Well, what's going on in the history of America, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm very uh, engaged in that. But you know, I I have my clients. I work with them, and and some I have you know, on a regular basis. Uh, there's sometimes it's just a one shot. They're you know they they're doing something, uh, and uh, they only need to survive it one time. So that's good. Yeah. So that's, that's brilliant. I'm that's brilliant. Oh. We, we, we've chatted many, many times now, and I really do appreciate your time. I know you're, you're pretty heavily into what's going on there, so I'll, I'll let you go. I, mm -hmm. um, I want to I wanna just wrap up with just giving Doyle and Irene a chance again to talk about what's going on in this, this larger trend. Clubhouse is a trend. Whether we like it or not, it is here. <laughs> Six yeah. million people have jumped on since April. It's showing a human need for interaction, whether it's video or um, whether it's online or whether it's audio I only. I totally so, get that. It's the perfect antidote vaccine for uh, quarantine. Yeah, it's the perfect. It's, it's the perfect. perfect. Yeah, it is because a, it's radio you can talk to. <laughs> it's radio yeah. you can talk to. Radio you can talk to, and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to brush your teeth. It's perfect. It's just the sound of another person's voice, and just really connecting with someone. They, yeah. a, they probably have hooked it up in such a way that it's a, a little bit more than that. I'm sure, and uh, and you can create uh, connections and and people and so on. I mean. I'm someone who's like okay being where I am, but I have friends that have to be out there and talking to people and doing stuff all the time. They don't care who they are, what's going on, what business they're on. They'll find common ground because they have that need. They yeah. need to connect. So it's it a personality really type. Matter it? about who or what. It's a person. personality type, isn't it? I mean, I, I have noticed this. Several of the people that have recommended, very heavily recommended, Clubhouse are that type. They can talk to anyone, and they even want to talk to anyone. I, I mean, I'm a bit more selective, like you, Gail. I, if I'm going to spend time learning a new thing or buying an iPhone, I mean, people are buying an iPhone just to get on it. What a stupid idea! Great for Apple. They sell 1.5 million. 1.5 million iphones in the quarter four yeah, so you know it's, it's just a personality trait and i'm not i'm not throwing shade or anything like that i get it it's fine and it's i'm i'm not i'm not making a judgment call here i think it's yeah. you know different strokes for different folks but i love the idea the concept it's radio you can talk to well why don't we pick up on that door what do you think radio you can talk to is that <laughs> is that something you can relate to yeah, said, said said first by Gail Murphy. So um, I just typed it into the box because <laughs> I love that idea. Um, yeah, look, I think it changes the dynamic a little bit in terms of how we interact. And maybe it is just the the warm, soothing voice that we want to hear at the end and, and kind of chit chat and that sort of thing, too. So the ones who will make a success of it will kind of use that as that sort of how do I connect with more people? I'll just have a, you know, a conversation with them. That's it. Yeah, and some yeah. people are much more comfortable with talking to strangers than they are with talking to members of their family or people that they know. So it's great, documented or not documented. You're, you're inside my mind right now, guys. You're there's inside no my judgment. mind. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, that's 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 a that's a that's a that's a sharp observation that we can put on a t-shirt. Some What's people that? like would, some people would prefer to talk to their astral. Uh, some people would prefer to talk to a stranger than their own family. Of course, of course. Are you kidding That's me? Everybody family. has an inside life that they don't want to take responsibility for. 
Yeah, <laughs> just some, some random person on the bus gets to hear your life story, but you can't even tell your own dad. But yeah. on the bus, be, on the bus, they would, yeah. On the That's bus, the they you hear it. Talk radio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's Gail from Minnesota, right? <laughs> I go, yes, this, is, this is Phyllis from Phoenix. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to talk about this. That yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's the funny. anonymity, which is so. You know, I get that. I'm but, a very that, private person, so I would probably say hi. This is Felix from Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> that actually yeah. is interesting because if you had, if you did that, like you said, Gail, on the bus, like it's talking to somebody on the bus, people would look at you and going, "Why is this person talking to me?" Right? But on Clubhouse, it's okay. Um, yeah. and, and so there's that, that freedom that allows you to do that. If you call somebody up and say, Hey, Hey Gail, I'm Doyle from Phoenix, right? <laughs> you know, can we chat? They'd, they'd gain it. <laughs> what? Who's this? Right? <laughs> but they're not because you don't know where this chat. Yes, exactly. exactly. There's no exactly. real shame in having that kind of conversation. Exactly. Just observation. exactly. What I mean, are your thoughts on this? People are just happy to have someone to talk to. I am one of those people, but. I, I, they have to be perfectly uh, vetted. Mm -hmm. and, and often you're talking at them, though, because hmm? it's not it's not a two way flow. You you only you only allowing them to say a few words while you get what you have to get out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. like sit next to Forrest Gump on the couch, you know, and mm -hmm. he, he offers some exactly. chocolates. Well, you're not really listening to him. You're just he's just talking at you, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, when I'm talking to my friends, we could talk straight for two hours and still feel like we have three more hours to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's your thoughts on this, Irene? Because we've mentioned yeah. many times that you like podcasting and Clubhouse fits that vibe. The reason I'm playing on the Clubhouse thing is because it's right now. It, it, to me, it's really quite bizarre because I love video. I love what we're doing here right now. I'm moving people around. People who are talking are on screen. And we've, and we've gone to the trouble of getting the right lighting and the right mic and the right webcam, and we look great and we're recording it. But there is this thing called Clubhouse and eventually Twitter Spaces. Does it fit over your your love of podcasting? Is that what you think it is or is it the fact that you don't have to have your mic on? Not on your yet. camera. Not yet. Not yet. I mean, I probably from business standpoint, right, I better to consider because I do want to grow podcast. I'm talking with fascinating people in tech every week. So it's probably it's a good medium for me. So I'm in discovery mode to kind of look, right, who is there? What mm -hmm. can I add? Because as social as I am, you know, since I was a little girl and I like talking to people and people normally like talking to me, but I'm not that desperate that I have to enter this room, you know, without knowing who people around me. So I do need yeah. some connection, you know, I need some connection, okay? And I'm lucky to have friends and my family still talking to me after wow. all the quarantining. So I'm yeah. very lucky. I appreciate that. So point is, I do want to find interesting conversations and hopefully lead interesting conversation myself. Yeah, but yeah, right yeah, now yeah. I'm in very kind of obsessive sort of, yeah, skeptical mode just to see where this is going. Yeah, well, okay. Well, we, we have been working together on several really key projects around um, online events and this hybrid model. What do you think is going to happen in the next 12 months around the idea of of online events being indeed better than real life. Are we, are we on the money there or is it, is it just a bit of a lark? Me, Keith, right? You want? Yeah, 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 no, yeah. really. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, this is growing. I mean, amount of events, I'm only thinking, right? Because, yeah, three of us trying to figure out what play, what part in this whole new universe, right? We will take. All I'm seeing is that dozens of companies, dozens of companies right now rushing in to either offer platforms or services or, you know, me, 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 I'll do marketing for you if you do this. Yeah. So it's definitely very, very vibrant place right now. And it will, it, it will only grow. It will only grow. Of course, the best ones will win. So nothing, yeah, no surprises there. Mm -hmm. well, look, we've and been chatting now. The ones, that, the ones that will make a difference are the ones that are not seeing it as a, a linear progression right yeah. they're seeing it as how, how do we actually enable this type of stuff the tech is the tech is the tech right and yeah you might have to do some programming around it but how, how do we actually complement that human experience that is obviously that's what makes us human so let's be honest we have to 
we have to evolve we have to replicate that we have to be able to to consider those things so the models that are just you know step one two three you know what they might not meet with success something like eventbrite where you know they're kind of really missing that of uh, that whole concept of the the digital experience yet they're kind of there but they're not so what are they doing about it they're a big company why haven't they been leading the way in in terms of creating yeah. a remarkable digital experience they know part they know they have like 50 percent mm -hmm. of the formula so the is that a little that bit like red balloon are you thinking red balloon could do a bit of a digital events take yeah yeah like i had conversations with them but again they don't necessarily see that as as an opportunity so unless you do then you're not going to yeah. explore it at all um but it gives you a global market you know at a, at a click of a button type thing so for a lot of business it can grow and and as i've said many times before like digital adoption is about 25 percent worldwide and that's because they don't have a, a clear digital experience but if you can the ones who have seen the biggest rates of growth like five ten years of growth in nine months as a result of covid because they've sort of seen that opportunity and they've been able to leverage it in that digital space and i'm not talking just events obviously those are the ones that have really kind of leapfrogged what's going on so that's what we're going to see now is what businesses well, you, you, a leap you, you've, said, you've said a lot to me I, i'm really interested I've, I've, I've been really playing and i'm really hanging on your words here because to me this is quite a visually pleasing system and that you know the person that's speaking fills the frame and there's three people on the side mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. comment and that's i think that's an, a step up from what we used to be able to do because television is passive and i can't comment and they don't care what i think but you're and i'm really fascinated Doyle, you you think we can do better you can what 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 piece is this missing? What what are that what are people not doing that's crying to be done? Well, it's it's those insights that you know Gail and Natasha showed us and demonstrated that hey, wait a sec, it's not it's not a perfect thing. And and I think that those are the, the ones that need to say, okay, well, how do we do that? Right? How do we actually take that and, and make sense yeah. of it? So we need to be able to do that. You're right. This this is a decent uh Mm -hmm. platform right it, it kind of carries the weight of, of video and and guests and that sort of thing but what more could it be right it could be you know when when people are talking like sometimes you can't hear the other person and they're trying to say something important too so you you're kind of talking over people un you know unknowingly and don't get me wrong i'm yeah. not saying that but it and and also it's just us talking in a small little group like where's everybody else like why can't <laughs> we get to come in and join us and have part of that conversation mm. as well at the same time so to me there there are limitations we're saying well we're, we're taking the old broadcast tv model and saying well let's make let's democratize it yeah. and, and everybody can have a you know stream yard platform from their laptop anywhere in the world which is cool but fundamentally it, it's again just saying here here's something to to go ahead and use it's not saying necessarily how to use it or what's the best way to use it well uh, let me pick up on yeah, go ahead, Keith. Sorry, are you there? Yeah, so wh why don't we pick up on this idea? Um, two things. One is, what is air meat doing? And more importantly, what is it not doing? We've been really pulling apart air meat. So here's an example, airmeat.com. It's a step above StreamYard. It's a step above. It's this and more. But there's things that it's not doing. What do you think it's not doing? Well, it is again like that. There, look, it's a it's a lot better than you know the single tools like like Remo or or you know something where it's one specific function like the tables function, which is a pretty cool um, aspect of that. But it, it comes down to again, how do we actually redefine what we're wanting to experience and how we're wanting to do it? So. To, to me, again, we're still using some of those pieces and just popping them in and saying, let's write code to yeah. go from here to here yeah. type thing. And, and it's okay, well, it gets the job done, right? But but again, a lot of that interaction that you miss at a conference, you're still not able to get. The, the run the world dot today has some of that where they have like this fireside chat where you can kind of connect with speakers and that sort of thing. Like, wouldn't it be cool if when you enter an online conference that somebody comes and greets you Right, somebody shows yeah. you, okay, well, like an usher. over here, and, yeah, like an usher, or 
you know, a program director, or whatever, that greeter, and, and they come and they talk with you and say, here, here's how to get, and I'm talking like a live person. I'm not talking like a, an automated AI bot, right? Somebody actually does that. And, and so you're, you're kind of being able to meet in these spaces. Oh, come join us. We're talking. There's, you know, about 10 people already in this room and they're just kind of um, having a chit chat type thing. So, and then there's nothing to kind of convey that sort of MC program across yeah, okay. these yeah, yeah. Talks. Well, so you know, there's, yeah, there's still more missing. to do, isn't there? There's still more to do. There's, there's still is more to do, but it, yeah. it's an evolution. No, I'm glad you brought. Start, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, we have to start somewhere. So it's good yeah, I'm glad you brought this up because you know we talk about platforms all the time and beating to death the platforms, right? Do they do that? Do they do that? You know what? With every event, I get excited, and I hope you get excited when you really meet someone amazing. Okay, and that energy it can propagate through the screen. I'm convinced of that. You know, when you see amazing person yes. and you want to know more about this person, okay, it's okay that we're in this virtual reality. It's all right. But all I'm saying is that when what what you're talking about this kind of personal emceeing hosting experience yeah. that someone cares that you're there. Okay, yeah, moving, right. it, moving it around. Look, I might let Gail go because it's getting late there. Gail, just last last thoughts on what you're thinking about all of this, and thank you again for all your time. What, where do you think this is going, and what have you you seen so far this call of, to to give you some juice of how it can compare to the real world? Well, I don't think anybody's going back to work anymore in terms of a place or a space or a mall or a um, you know a whole business kind of thing you know business place this is the way this is the future and this this is what it is and it's it's okay i mean yeah mm -hmm. i'm okay with it um no i'm not actually i'm not really okay with it in <laughs> terms of because i'm thinking in terms of what i do in my business but you have to go with the flow so you have yeah. to be, we have to put on our inventor hat hat and invent how we're for ourselves how we're going to work around this and so that when we continue to do what we do we still get pleasure out of it rather than feeling cheated you know yeah okay well, look i yeah I, I look I, I think there's a there's a lot more discussion to have we're, we're going to have this show every week at 7 p.m eastern until easter at least until easter and then the event itself is in um is in may uh the 12th to the 14th of May, we are actually have this real event. I want you to follow this hashtag for me, better than real life events. Of course, it's a bit of a, a euphemism. Is How can online be better than real life? It's a bit of a sort of a game, but we are playing around with it. So I want to thank my guests today, Gail Murphy calling in from LA, Irene calling in from Connecticut, and Doyle calling in from Perth. And, you know, I'm, my name is Keith Keller. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. So I want you to, to uh, you know, come back and join us either on Facebook, tw uh, uh, Twitter and Periscope and YouTube. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for your time. And we're going to keep this, this conversation going and we, we very much welcome your input. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. That was great. No worries. I'm just I'm just wrapping up, just sort of doing some sort of professional ending, and then I'm going to end the call, and we'll see you next week.